Mark Scar with guitarist Warner Hodges to talk about right back where I started. Warner, how are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm really good. Awesome. First of all, I have to ask, how's Mr. Baird doing? Mr. Baird is doing great. He's got one chemo treatment left next Wednesday, and he's done. Fantastic. Uh, we, are, we are actually booking shows with Dan Baird and Homemade Sin in May already. Great. I'm glad to hear it. Fantastic. We'll let the fan base know. Let's talk about the new record, right back where I started. Uh, you're busy Dude. doing so many things, but this new record is fantastic. I want to tell everybody all about it. Do, do. Thank you very much. It's a good record. Yeah, it's a nice, fine rock and roll record. Quite a few friends played on it, including, from Cheap Trick, one of my favorite bands, Tom Peterson. I, I assume you've known Tom a long time. I've known Tom uh, in meeting for years, but he's, got, he's a Nashville guy now. He lives here in Nashville, and we've been involved with each other through all kinds of stuff. And I just one day jokingly mentioned that he should play on my next record, and he said, cool, I will. So it's uh, Cheap Tricks. It's one of my absolute favorite bands, too. Excellent. Jerry Dale McFadden plays on there also. Yes, he does. Now, I've known Jerry Dale. We go back, oh, Lord, 80, 81. I actually played on Jerry's first solo record. So he's on there, and of course, some of the familiar faces, the aforementioned Dan Baird, and uh, some other familiar faces from the Bluefields as well. Yes, sir. Mr. Brad Pemberton, who plays drums for Steve Earle, and Joe Blanton, an old buddy, Joe Blanton, a singer from the Royal Court of China and singer for the Bluefields. He's an amazing singer. And so they're all a part of this, uh, and they, they pitched in on songwriting too, right? Oh, yeah. Well, Joseph... Joseph and Dan and I always write together, and uh, it's uh, Joe has been involved. Like I say, I've been working with Joe off and on since the late 70s. Mm. So. so 10 songs. Uh, when did you find time to, to put this one together? Uh, let me see. We cut, the, we cut the rhythm tracks before the July Homemade Sin tour. And then when we got back from that, that's when we found out Dan was so ill. Mm-hmm. When we got back from that, um, we finished up all the lead vocals and the lead guitars, background vocals and all that, and then kind of went to work. Joe actually did about six weeks of touring with us with Homemade Sin. He subbed for Dan. Right. We did a couple weeks in America and four weeks in Europe with Joe as our lead singer. So, and now it's out and people can get it on your website. Yes, they can. WarnerEHodges.com. Come get you one. <laughs> please, please, please do. Uh, and your whole uh, solo catalog is on there as well. Now, I th- yes. Yep. Uh, and of course, I think probably right before that, Warner, uh, was the roller coaster record. Yes, it was. And we're actually, we're actually, it's funny you say that because we, uh, we start on a new homemade sin March 7th. Oh, that's my birthday. Uh, Oh, is it? Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Roller Coaster's good record. It is a fantastic record. Of course, I say that about all of them, don't I? <laughs> wow. Mm. Well, it's it's nice to be uh, involved in so many good records. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm very fortunate that I get to play with some good dudes. No doubt about it. Um, Warner is, I like to say, tasty. You're fun to watch. You color the songs brilliantly. Well, I try to. I mean, uh, you know, in the Scorchers, we used to joke about it. We called it mowing down the hoedown. <laughs> but uh, I, I'd like to think 35 years later, I got a little bit more taste about me. I'm not sure, but maybe. <laughs> uh, we're talking with Warner Hodges. Let's talk about the Red Wristband Special. That was um, kind of, uh, it's, it's out there now on uh I guess it's Dan's website, but kind of a, at the time, kind of a special show. Yeah, it's Jerk and Crocus. Um, somebody somehow, uh, I, I think the sound man recorded one of the sets and an audience member got the other set. It was the last show we did with Dan when he was so sick. And um, before we shut him down, before they, before they put him in the hospital, and it, it's astounding. He did the last week. He did three amazing shows in five days that I don't know how he did it because we were taking him to the hospital every day. Mm. Um, We had three more shows left on the tour, and Dan was just trying to get done and get home, you know? How weird was it to do Homemade Sin without Dan? It was weird in 
one way, but it's also Joe. Joe was the right guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's co a lot of the homemade sin stuff with us. He's mixed or engineered or produced the last two or three records with us. And yeah, it was like using somebody in the family. Sure. You know, that's kind of a weird, hey, here's Dan Baird and Homemade Sin without Dan. But uh, it, it worked. Joe learned like 60 Dan Baird songs. Mm. And in a weird way for the fan base, he kind of gave them the Dan Baird show that Dan don't give them. He basically gave them a greatest hits every night, you yeah. know? Sure. Because Dan you- plays what well, he wants to. He's not necessarily going to play what you want him to play every night. Right, because there's no set list with Dan. No set list, and we're usually traveling with 120, 130 songs. Incredible. I'm impressed by that. Always have been. And Joe, Joe managed to do, you know, 60 of them that way, which is, that's a lot of somebody else's songs to learn to be the guy. You know, it's one thing to play bass or drums or guitar. It's another to learn all their lyrics. And Dan's guitar parts, you know? No question. Speaking of all of this, the Blue Fields, three albums, they're all great. Is there going to be a return yeah. to that at some point? Yes, we're going to try to do a Blue Fields record this, uh, at this spring after. We actually have one written in the box. We just haven't recorded it. We're going to try to do it after we get the Homemade Sin record recorded. Okay. Kind of we've been in a pattern because we didn't know what Dan's health was going to be. Sure. But Dan's going to be in great shape, thank God. And he's playing bass uh, on a majority of that stuff. Yeah, he is. He's Geezer Butler in the Bluefields. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Dan loves bass. He's he's a huge fan. Ronnie Lane was one of his favorite guys, and uh, Dan's just a huge a huge fan of bass. Obviously, you know we had Keith Christopher in our band for years, mm-hmm. and. Uh, so Dan's, Dan's a wannabe bass player, you know. Most people are closet singers or, or guitar players. I'm a closet drummer. He's a closet bass player. I think he's one of the best lyricists that I've come across as well. He doesn't get enough credit for that. Well, I've I got to tell you, I've been working with Danny now for, for 10 years. Uh, I've known Dan since 84. They don't come too much better than Dan Baird. He's forgotten more rock and roll than most of us will ever learn. Mm, so well said. He, he, he is an amazing singer. He's an amazing guitar player, and yeah, you know, he's a, he's an unbelievable lyricist. He's he's great. And collectively, you guys are just a blast. I just I caught two shows last year: the Slim Show in yeah. Minneapolis and the show in Rochester, yeah. Minnesota. That was fun. It was fun. Yeah, and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Uh, well, quite honestly, at this age, yeah. We ain't going to be playing Madison Square Garden next week. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> but that said, you guys are busier than busy all the yeah, time. We love and have, and have a good time, and we make a living playing guitar. That's good, you know? That is good. It's uh, You can't ask for much more than that. Driving and crying, uh, what's going on there? Well, the, I had to let that one go, or okay. they let me go. or something. I had missed 70-something shows last mm. year, and they had to get another guy. I just was missing too many shows for them to have any consistency. I do love that band. I, I wish I was still playing in that band. And I don't know, Kevin and I and Tim are all buddies. We've known each other 35 years. So, you know, if they need a hand, I'm there if they need it. Fair enough. Warner, if people want to find you or get your stuff, how can they do that? WarnerEHodges.com, or you can go to my Facebook pages. I actually have two. I've got Warner Hodges. And Warner E. Hodges. Mm-hmm. My personal page is full with my friends list. They only allow you so much, so I had to start a musician band page. But between those two things, that's the way to get a hold of me. Beautiful. Warner, thank you so much for your time, and we really, we really appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you calling. Warner Hodges, right back where I started. That's the new record. Be looking for Homemade Sin in 2018. For Warner Hodges, I'm Mark Scar.